There are several things. No, let me start this one. There are many things that I believe that I shall never say, but I shall never say the things that I do not believe. Immanuel Kant. There are several things that need to be said, and uh, to everything there is a season. My job is to uh, inform you, also to entertain you, um, but to enlighten you and warn you. And I have felt this was a calling more than a job. It's the only reason why I still sit here. And uh, there will come a time when those who are trusted voices will no longer be able to be heard. We, we know this because of the attack on... Um, Anybody that just disagrees, if you are for uh, life and you are praying, you can go to jail for 20 years. Um, if you are doing a job of reporting, you can go to jail. Uh, if, well, let me give you this story from, um, from Portland today. A woman has now been convicted by a Portland, Oregon jur uh, jury of criminal harassment, a hate crime, after she misgendered and confronted a trans person using the women's bathroom. Cassandra McIntyre told Rills Larson, a far-left trans activist formerly known as Ronald Larson, that they're a man and to get out after the male allegedly shoved another person to cut in line for the woman's toilet. The jury saw the video of McIntyre lightly shoving Larson during the confrontation. She was sentenced to two years probation plus community service. That's longer than anyone for BLM or Antifa rioters or arsonists have ever received in Oregon. Larson is a self-identified Marxist, queer, demi-binary trans woman. So these things are real. We also know that um, catch and release is really happening in almost everything now with law enforcement. It's not just the border thing. It is also um, in our cities. They, we told you a story yesterday where four people who cut up two corpses and then scattered them in a park uh, were caught and then released. Um, okay. Then we were also told on the same day that the National Guard was being put into the subways of New York. Now, the reason this is uh, bad, we don't use the National Guard uh, for that unless it's, you know, especially on an ongoing basis in a riot, maybe. Um, but that's your police force now, the Army? Not good. Um, and I wondered, because of yesterday, uh, as they put the chain link fence around the Capitol again, I was wondering, is that National Guard there because of crime? Uh, is that National Guard there to get people used to seeing the guard? Uh, is that National Guard there because our Department of Homeland Security said every light is blinking red because we are headed toward a, a colossal terrorist attack. So is the National Guard there for that, and they just don't tell us? Every light in me is flashing red right now. And my family, we're going through some difficult discussions, and, and, and we're, this is going to be a difficult time. And uh, until I see the next president or this president legitimately uh, sworn into office, I don't think my lights will start, uh, start flashing green or even yellow for a while. 
there are too many things that could go wrong. And last night, our president was again setting us up. Did you know that in Moscow yesterday, the American embassy told Americans to stay away from any large gatherings because Intel says that there are extremists who want to bomb and kill people in the public square. Now, who are those extremists? The president did not talk about the extremists that made his uh, motorcade stop for 10 minutes because they couldn't get through the crowd. With Secret Service, police, everything they have, they couldn't get the motorcade moving through the crowd for 10 minutes. And the president immediately started to speak about war and the war internally and externally. And the war internally are the Trumpers. The war internally are January Sixers. Well, I was just as mad, if not madder, than most people. I warned against January 6th. Don't go. It's a trap. Um, and I was furious on January 6th. And I still am furious to anybody who was there that broke the windows, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I don't care what political bent you're from. I don't care. You're not a friend of the Republic. But now I also know that there are things uh, that have already been revealed and things that are coming that will show our government was deeply involved in that. And it's to paint half the country as an extremist. I fear Beslan or something like it is coming. A group of terrorist attacks that will happen in a week that will so fundamentally shock the American people. And you heard fear in people I've talked to today. I am afraid for my wife. I'm afraid for my daughters. That will become a reality. And people will scream, make it stop. And extremists will be defined by whoever is in power. And I believe this will happen before there's a change of power. I hope to God not. B pray, and if you can, pray on your knees. Beg for protection of the republic. But when that happens, I believe that if they're not preparing, they're foolish, um... But when the Department of Homeland Security issues the warnings they have been issuing and nobody's talking about them, and then the president talks about extremists in the country, and we have open borders where we know thousands who wish us ill are now in the country and we have no idea. We have no idea where they are, who they are, what they're planning. And we have them from all walks of life. We have them from China. We have them from Iraq. Uh, sorry, Iran. We have them from uh, Gaza. W we have them from Russia. Everywhere and anywhere, the people who hate us are coming through. And I'm sorry that you, I'm sorry if you show me the majority that are families with children. They're mainly 20 something men. And we know that this is happening now. I believe our government um, at least has a plan that they should have, perhaps, to grab control of the country and issue martial law, God forbid, if something like this happens. Um, and I think it could happen before January. And I often say to you, where you are is where you will be. When something like this happens, there will be so much chaos. If, God forbid, it's a Beslan-like attack, there will be so much chaos that the government will have to say curfew. Think of what they did in Boston. Remember when the Boston bomber was loose and they just shut the city down? Everyone, stay in your home. 
We're looking for him. He could be somewhere. He could even be in your home. And extremists now cover so many things. When that happens, are these Islamic extremists? If there's, if there's people that see it, because remember, I've said for years, this is not going to be coordinated. This is going to be people seizing the opportunity. They'll see the weakness and they will seize the opportunity. So I believe things like this, some of them will be very well planned out. Others will happen just because it's happening and they'll say, go now, go, 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 go. God forbid, I, I'm this, I have no reason to say this except for my gut. So please don't take this as gospel. Please don't take this as gospel. I, I, this is what I do for a living. And my job is to connect all the dots and say, what's a likely outcome? I don't know how likely this is, but I will tell you, the people are here. The opportunity is now. Uh, much more than it will be in January. It solves a ton of problems. Our president last night, I'm not saying he was he's involved in anything like this, but he's setting the table for that. We already have crime in our streets and people don't feel safe. If you fear this because you're not mentally prepared, not physically prepared, have not had a meeting place for your family. If things go wrong, here's where we meet. You will be where you are, and they will be where they are. Because people will say, dear God, just make it stop. And when there's that much chaos, when people are afraid for their own life, Hong Kong can be lost. And all of those people that were protesting are just disappeared. And the world doesn't even see it. This show is not for everybody, and I understand that. And uh, I've been called all kinds of names for this, and I understand that. My family at times will say, Dad, come on. And I understand that. I can only tell you the things that I believe. I can only tell you the things that I think are true. I have prayed for 20 years, please don't let these things be right. There's nobody that would be more happy than me. And I do believe there is a way only if you put on the full armor of God and shod your feet with the gospel of peace. We can make it, and we will make it to the other side of whatever comes our way. But we'll be in much worse shape if we're not mentally, physically, and spiritually prepared. 